Do you find it difficult to survive in human society? Let me tell you a bug's life is way more difficult. In a small colony of ants besides the lake, numerous ants stay busy all day. They must collect enough food before the time runs out. But this food isn't for themselves. Ants might be the hardest workers, but they aren't the brightest when it comes to creativity. They follow the same old rules of harvesting food and panic easily when they lose track. However, Flick is different. While other ants are picking up grain by grain, Flick prefers inventing the harvesting machine. He rushes to show it to Princess Ada. The ants have to gather food for themselves and for the grasshoppers as well who threaten them every year. Flick's machine can boost the process, but no one understands his point. Instead of admiring, Ada scolds Flick for causing unnecessary trouble. Flick tries to explain how his inventions can bring revolutions. He also shows how to make a small telescope. However, the ants prefer following the good old traditions. They find Flick's creativity a threat to the colony and ask him to leave. Ada's younger sister Dot really likes the telescope Flick made and rushes to console him. Flick gets really happy to find someone who admires him. Dot wonders how Flick can think out of the box while she finds herself useless. Hearing this, Flick picks up a stone and asks Dot to consider it a little seed. It might be small, but one day, it will grow into a huge, powerful tree. Similarly, Dot will be able to do something big one day. Their conversation gets interrupted by the sound of horns. It's a warning of Grasshopper's arrival. Everyone rushes inside their hill, but Flick is left behind. He climbs the offering stone to dump the food and then runs towards the ant hill. In a rush, he accidentally leaves his machine near the stone. It hits the stone and all the food falls in the water. After getting inside the hill, Flick tries to tell everything to Ada, but she doesn't listen to him. She's only worried about carrying out the task successfully. She must prove herself worthy of taking the throne after her mother. Suddenly the ground starts to tremble. The grasshoppers have arrived. They get really angry on finding no food and break inside the anthill. The poor ants start running here and there to save their lives. The intruder's leader Hopper walks to the princess and asks for the food. Ada tries to explain she didn't do anything. But Hopper tells her the first rule of leadership. Everything is the leader's fault because he failed to guide his followers properly. Hopper gives another chance to ants for collecting food, but they will be left with no time to collect for themselves. The evil grasshopper doesn't care even if the ants starve to death. Hopper also grabs Dot to threaten the ants and Flick walks forward to save her. Hopper is astonished at Flick's courage. However, none of the other ants dare to speak a word and accept Hopper's orders. The grasshoppers leave and warn to come back before the first rainfall. Flick is called into the ants' court and scolded heavily. Flick doesn't get disheartened at all and presents his latest plan. He suggests traveling to the other shore of the river and finding other bugs. Some of them may agree to help the ants in fighting against the grasshoppers. Leaving the island is like a taboo for the coward ants, so Flick volunteers to complete this task by himself. Ada knows he will never survive this journey, but it's a good chance to get rid of Flick and his nonsense ideas. She allows Flick to execute his plan. He packs up his things and gets ready to leave the island. The ants celebrate his departure and the poor Flick assumes that the ants are cheering for him. The only one who truly believes him is Dot. She wishes him the best of luck in finding other bugs. Flick is actually right. There's a bunch of different kinds of bugs living on the other side. They even have a circus where a talented group performs dangerous tricks. It includes a sharp-minded black widow, a clumsy beetle, a chubby caterpillar, two pill bugs who always keep fighting, a stick bug who acts as props, a male ladybird, an elderly mantis, and his wife, who's a beautiful moth. This group is hired by P.T., a flea who owns the circus. Unfortunately, the circus is losing its audience and P.T. keeps trying new stunts to grab the attention. He calls all of his employees and sets up a stunt in which the beetle has to pass a burning trail with the help of other group members, but they all are blindfolded and have just 15 seconds. The stunt fails and instead of the beetle, P.T. gets stuck and burns himself. He gets really angry and fires the whole circus group. The group sits down at a bar inside an old tin can and discusses finding another job. Flick has reached the bar too and starts looking for tough bugs who can help him fight the grasshoppers. Suddenly a bunch of bees starts bullying the ladybird for his feminine appearance. The circus group gets triggered and pretends to be expert warriors to threaten the bees. Suddenly the tin can loses its balance and everyone rolls over along with it. When Flick stands up again, the first thing he sees is the circus group and mistakes them for expert warriors. He explains how much he needs them. The circus group believes that Flick is a talent hunter so it goes with him immediately. Meanwhile on the island, the ants are falling sick because of continuous hard work. They had no hope of Flick returning or bringing tough bugs. On seeing him again, the ants go into deep shock. The circus bugs introduce themselves as warriors who will help them knock off the grasshoppers. The ants start to believe them and throw a welcome party for them. Flick doesn't take the credit and thanks Otta for believing in him. He doesn't know that Otta was just trying to get rid of him. 
The other ants are clueless about the whole situation and show their admiration toward the warriors. The circus group gets really touched and feels guilty to deceive the poor ants. They call Flick for an emergency meeting and explain the whole situation. The bugs want to leave immediately and Flick keeps begging them to stay. He doesn't want to be called a failure again. Dot notices them and follows them to convince the bugs. Suddenly a big sparrow attacks them. Otta and other ants reach there too and get anxious for Dot. Luckily, the circus group and Flick succeed in saving the little ant. Otta feels really grateful and apologizes to Flick for not believing him. Flick has given the ants new hope and a new ambition. These words motivate Flick to plan a new strategy. He asks for the help of other bugs in building a fake bird that can be used to scare off the grasshoppers. The bugs refuse at first, but then they notice the faith the ants have put in them. The kids ask for their autographs and wish to become warriors like them. The bugs agree and Flick starts executing his plan. They explain the blueprints to the ants and everyone participates in building the bird. They use sticks to make the structure and cover it with fallen leaves. After the test drive, they store it in a tree hole. This activity improves the relationship between Flick and Otta, and they start developing feelings for each other. Meanwhile, the grasshoppers are enjoying the summer in a bar constructed under a hat. Other members send Hopper's brother to convince Hopper to leave the ants. They already have enough food. They don't need the tasteless grains collected by the filthy ants. Hopper gathers everyone to make them understand the point. The purpose of going to the anthill is not food. It is to keep the ants in their limit. Ants reproduce faster and they can outnumber grasshoppers easily. Once they realize this fact, they will win against the enemy. Therefore, the grasshoppers must keep them in fear. Back at the island, all the preparations have been done. The ants are busy celebrating their success, so Flick allows the circus group to leave. Surprisingly, they don't want to. They have got so much love from the ants and want to stand by them till they knock off the grasshoppers. However, this happy moment is not for long. The horn is blown to announce the grasshopper's arrival, but it turns out to be P.T. He has come to get back his circus team as the last show was a huge success. P.T. reveals the identity of the so-called warriors and the ants blame Flick for deceiving them. The queen calls him selfish as she has never seen an ant who thinks about himself before the colony. Otta orders the circus group to leave immediately along with Flick. They will no longer follow the stupid plans and gather food for the grasshoppers. As the next morning arrives, the grasshoppers reach the anthill. They get angry on seeing just a few grains collected for them. Hopper forces the ants into collecting food again and they will not be allowed to eat or rest. Dot and the other kids hide inside their clubhouse and hear the Hopper's plan. He's going to kill the queen to show off his power. The only one who can save them right now is Flick. Dot rushes to get him but a grasshopper attacks her and pushes her off the cliff. Fortunately, Dot finally learns to fly and rushes to find Flick, but Flick doesn't want to return. He has accepted defeat and considers himself useless. Dot picks up a stone and puts it beside Flick to remind him of what he said. A little seed can turn into a powerful tree. Flick understands the point right away and rushes back to the anthill. The plan is to distract the grasshoppers with a circus performance and get the queen in a safe place. Meanwhile, Flick and the kids are going to bring the fake bird. The mantis calls the queen to volunteer as part of a magic trick. In this way, they hide the queen away and signal Flick to release the bird. Unfortunately, the bird stucks in the branches and Hopper starts asking for the queen. Mantis begins explaining his magic trick to buy some time and Flick succeeds in flying the bird. All the ants pretend to be scared and run here and there. The grasshoppers also rush to save their lives. Thing were going according to the plan, but then P.T. ruined everything. He wants to continue his circus show and lights the fire stick. Accidentally, the bird catches fire and crashes on the land. The ant's plan is revealed and Hopper is not happy to learn it. He orders a grasshopper to punish Flick for standing up against them. Hopper calls them a species lower than dirt and orders them to remember a lesson that ideas are very dangerous things. Ants are mindless, soil-shoving losers that are put on this earth to serve the grasshoppers. Flick stands up again and denies Hopper's statement. Ants are not meant to serve grasshoppers. He has seen these ants do great things. Every year, they somehow manage to pick food for themselves and for the grasshoppers. So who is the weaker species? Ants don't serve grasshoppers. It's the grasshoppers who need the ants. Flick's words wake up all the ants from the sleep of slavery. They all attack the grasshoppers and make them run away for their lives. Only Hopper is left behind. Ants pick him up and put him inside a cannon. Suddenly, the clouds thunder and it starts raining. All the ants rush to hide. Hopper takes it as a chance to get his revenge and flies away with Flick. The circus group runs after him but can't stop him. Finally, Ada gets back Flick and lands on the ground. But the Hopper is still after them. 
Flick tells Otta to hide away while he tricks Hopper into getting near the bird's nest. The bird picks up Hopper and feeds him to its little babies. Finally, the grasshoppers are gone and it's time for celebration. Otta thanks the circus group for giving them back their freedom and dignity. Moreover, everyone gives a huge round of applause to Flick for his courage and dedication. Otta has also gained the Queen's throne and will be leading this courageous colony of creative ants. To truly be free from slavery, it's not just about getting rid of physical chains. We need to change the way we think and believe. Your limit is where you stop. Keep moving forward and achieve what you truly deserve.